What's going on YouTube? In this video, we're going to be breaking down my thoughts on the Madden 23 beta, my final thoughts, and just kind of some things that you can start to do um, in order to prepare yourself for the next season that we have coming up. Now, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I post videos every single day trying to help people become better Madden players. And so if you want to get better at the game, I'd really encourage you to click the subscribe button. Also, if you really want to take your game to a next level, I would also encourage you to consider joining my Patreon uh, page. It's only 10 bucks to sign up, get you access to all of my Madden 22 offensive and defensive eBooks. We've got over 30 eBooks over the course of the Madden 22 season. You can unlock all of them today for just 10 bucks. And the cool part about this is a lot of it will carry over into the Madden 23 season, so much so that for the month of July, we're actually going to be ramping up with our Madden 23 offensive and defensive eBooks in terms of what we learned from the beta so that you can start preparing today in order to be effective in Madden 23. So again, if you wanna check all that stuff out, that'll be linked down in the description. But what I wanted to do to start off this video is I just jumped into practice mode uh, with two of the main playbooks that I think you're going to be seeing. Honestly, the way the game works, um, I just will say that I hope that EA Sports can get some of the memo that a lot of the content creators and just com community in general have been posting. And that is essentially this, that the playbooks need to be improved. Um, the bottom line is there's really two to three uh, effective playbooks on offense, if you will. And then defensively even, uh, I would argue that there's really only two to three. And it really comes down to your play style. The Detroit playbook, in my opinion, is the most versatile playbook in Madden 23. It has trips tied in. It has bunch. It also has doubles Y flex, which is a really underrated spread set. And it also has a uh, gun bunch tight end. Those are kind of the top three or four formations that you'll have in that one. However, I will say this, that if you are someone that likes to only run the bunch formation, my personal opinion is that the Washington uh, football team's playbook is the best. It comes equipped with everything that you saw in Madden 22 and the clear out FL in play is back and better than ever. So I think that Washington, at least in the beginning of the year, is going to probably be the best gun bunch. And then another thing about playbooks, just real quick, the Cincinnati Bengals offensive playbook this year is still really effective. This was the playbook that a lot of the um, a lot of the 818 crew ended up running towards the end of the year. That playbook is still really good. Tight slots is still a really good formation. And so there's a lot of things that are, are going to carry over from the meta perspective. Now, I want to shift uh, on gears of playbooks right now and, and talk about defense i loaded up with two of in my opinion the most effective defensive playbooks to start the year um however i'm going to talk about a little bit of a change there's really two to three primary defensive playbooks that i think you want to be in in madden 23 the first one and in my opinion the best one is the four six playbook the reason the four six playbook is so good is this year dollar three two six is better than it's ever been i think it's probably the best year for a dollar right off the gate it's very effective this year also, you have Big Nickel over G, and I think that Big Nickel is going to be the most balanced defense in Madden 23 because of the fact that it, in Madden 23, they actually removed a lot of match coverages, unfortunately. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea, but a lot of the good nickel sets, such as like Nickel 335 Will, Nickel 335 Sam, even Nickel Normal, have lost a lot of their matching principles. No longer do you find Cover 4 Palms, Cover 6, Cover 9, and Cover 4 Quarters in the same formation outside of big nickel over g so that's why i say if you really want to win match coverage i think you're going to need to be in big nickel over g i also think that big nickel over g actually has the best blitzes in the in the madden 22 beta or in the madden 23 beta uh, from a four down lineman front dollar 326 in my opinion bose is the best pressure from a three down lineman front now, you also still have the nickel 335 wide. In Madden 23, it's called the nickel 335 cub. This formation is still really effective. Um, and I'm actually going to show you kind of a cool little tip in this video that I think is going to be really interesting with some of the plays that they actually changed in this, in this playbook um, or in this formation for Madden 23 that you can utilize. So the 4-6 playbook to me is one of the best again this year. 3-4 um, Bear, actually, I, I personally think they kind of nerfed 3-4 Bear. It's not as good as it was. They took out Pinch Dog 3, which was one of the best. The Pinch Dog 3 and Pinch Bug 0, those two plays in conjunction were, in my opinion, two of the best plays. And they kind of took that out and kind of redid that. So that's just something to keep an eye on. The 46 bear under and 46 bear are really good if you want to blitz a lot. So, again, that's why I say 46 is the number one playbook. Now, the number two playbook that I want to just briefly talk about 
in Madden 22, it is the New York Giants playbook, but in Madden 23, most of those principles and formations have been moved to the Las Vegas Raiders playbook. And what's cool about that is you have big nickel over G, you have nickel 335 odd, which I think a lot of people are sleeping on. The LB cross three show two looping pressures are really effective um, against blocked running backs this year. So that's just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. Loop blitzing that was good in Madden 18 and Madden 19. Those concepts are still really good in Madden 23. So I think you're going to see, you know, the 335 odd. You've got the 245 double A gap. Nickel 245 is really good as well. Um, because of the alignment of the defensive linemen. And then you also have dime 146, um, and, or I'm sorry, dime 236. Dime 236 is still really good. And then I'm going to give you two other playbooks that I think are really effective. Um, the, the, the third one is primarily just for one formation alone, and that's the Baltimore Ravens playbook, actually two formations. A nickel triple is still really good. I think nickel triple might be the best day one A-gap blitz in Madden 23, which we have already have um, a lot of this stuff covered in Madden 22. If you want to check out, I've gotten a full ebook on nickel triple and I think is one of my best blitzing defenses of the season. So anyways, um, the Baltimore Ravens has nickel triple. It also has um, nickel three, three, five odd, nickel three, three, five wide, uh, two, four, five, double a gap and two, four, five. But it also has two other formations that I think are really going to be good this year because of the fact that Madden took weak boxing out of the game. And I'm just going to show you uh, real quick, just a quick example. So like if I come out in a goal line set or a heavy run set, and you come out in a dollar in Madden 22, a lot of times, not every time, but a lot of times what will happen, see here, it didn't happen here, but you see how they're falling down on the left side. There's there's going to be what's called weak boxing in Madden 22, where basically if you come out in a heavy, heavy set like this, your linemen are going to pancake you. In Madden 23, that is taken away. That doesn't happen anymore. And so that's one of the reasons why I think dollar is going to be really good. It's also one of the reasons why Dime 146 and dime 236 are going to be really effective and you can find both of those formations in the baltimore ravens playbook so that's another playbook to kind of look out for and then lastly the tampa bay buccaneers playbook is still really effective on defense it's got the 245 odd it's got the uh, dime i think the dime 236 and the 146 um, and then it's got some other really good stuff as well so those are just some things from a playbook perspective so in my opinion you know, offensively, you're wanting to look at if you're going to want to run, um, if you want to run U trips, you got to be in New England, in my opinion, still. So if you want to run that, New England, um, you've got Washington, you've got Cincinnati, you've got Cincinnati or Carolina, depending on what you want from your bunch formation. And then you've got Detroit. And then lastly, if you want to run spread, I think spread is actually really good in Madden 23. The Arizona playbook or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playbook are the two best spreads in my personal opinion. And then on defense, if we flip over there, the 46 playbook to me is the number one playbook. The number two playbook, I think, is the Las Vegas Raiders. Third is the Buccaneers playbook. Fourth is the Ravens playbook. And then really after that, they're all kind of, you know, it is what it is. It depends if you're looking for a very specific formation such as a 335 Will or 335 Sam then you might want to look at maybe, um, I believe it was Seattle. Uh, but anyways, those are kind of some ideas just in terms of playbooks. I personally think in Madden 23, if I was going to give it a review, I really think they need to work on the playbooks and actually put some routes in some of these other playbooks that are viable because the reality is most playbooks don't have the routes and that's what makes it kind of hard to use other formations. It's not that they... It's not that they can't use other formations. It's that the routes don't don't attack everywhere on the field like they do from gun bunch or gun trips tight end or bunch tight end or U trips or spread. Um, they took a slot out of New England, unfortunately. I think that was a miss. They should hopefully put that back there, but we'll see what they do. But anyways, I think playbooks are a big deal. Now, um, I want to move on and talk about something else, and that is a quick pro tip about how the game works. So if I just come out here in the gun, um, I'm just gonna come out in gun bunch and I'm gonna show you something that is a tip from Madden 22 that still works in Madden 23. And that is that if you blitz your user, okay, so I'm gonna blitz David, my user, 
Then I'm going to take my linebacker on the right side of the screen, which is Shaquille Barrett. I'm just going to put him in any zone that I want. It doesn't matter what it is. I could spy him as well. Um, you know, so for this, you know, just this example, we'll man up the slot. We'll put Barrett in a vert hook. Now, all I need to do is take one of my defensive linemen, particularly the one opposite of the running back, if you want him to play over the middle, if you want him to guard the running back, the one over here. But anyways, bluff blitz him. By bluff blitzing him, I'm only blitzing two people, but what you'll notice here is they will still shed the quarterback relatively quickly, um, and I can have nine people in coverage. This principle still applies. And I've talked about it before on my channel, but this core principle um, still applies very well. Now, one of my favorite formations to do this out of is actually the big nickel over G, and I'm going to show you why. Because the logic of Madden is essentially what we, ironically, what we want on our players, unless they're using the post-up ability, we actually prefer uh, double teams. And so what we want to do here is we're going to bluff blitz the defensive end on the right side of the screen. And then over here, we can put this guy in anything that we want to. We could bluff blitz him if we want to take the running back away. I like to just man him up on the running back. Um, I just think that that's the easiest thing to do. Another thing you could do is drop this guy into a vert hook. And then now you have a nine-man coverage defense. And what you'll see here is we get two double teams. And one of them will almost always split it, as you can see right there. So unless they're using post up on both guards. They can't just be using it on their center. So this is one of my favorite tactics. Now, another way that you could apply the same basic principle is we could spy this guy, we could bluff blitz this guy, okay? Or we could, again, put this guy in anything. You could put him in a hook curl to the left if you want. It doesn't matter to me. But you, the main thing is you need to blitz your user and have a bluff blitz and then two other people rush you. Now, if you watch this, you'll see that these edge rushers are now gonna get the double teams and we get the split just like that. Okay, so those are just some things from a pass rushing perspective that you need to be aware of going into Madden 23. And the primary reason why is because in Madden 23, the pass rush is significantly improved. Now, I do want to also quickly point out that if you did go with a basic, just a basic four down lineman rush, this four down lineman rush here is almost as good as just blitzing. Okay, so if you can get the pressure sending four and just do it like this right here, keep your coverage intact. You see how fast these sheds are. I would equivalent Madden 23 sheds to practice mode sheds in Madden 22. That's how fast they're going to shed you, which I'm not honestly mad about um, because what it does is now if they do, I will say if they do drop, let's say I drop Sue and a spy. What you'll see happen here is they'll still shed pretty fast, but they're not like, it, it's not as good. It's still really good, but it's not like perfect. And I actually did a stopwatch and figured out that essentially you're going to have a little bit about an extra second. Um, let's say that the, the standard four down lemon rush, let's say it's, it sheds in 2.5 seconds. If you send two, like I showed you with the bluff blitz trick, it will shed in about 3.5 seconds. And so those are some things that you just need to kind of keep in the back of your mind in terms of how you're going to build your defense. Now, the best blitz in the game, at least at launch at right now as it sits, um, in my personal opinion, is the DB Fire 2. What you want to do is you want to baseline and press. And here's the trick. The reason you want to baseline and press is because it's going to get this guy out here and it's going to get this guy out here. Now, if you can learn how to stop the run from dollar, which I've got some tips on my YouTube channel and in my Patreon to teach you how to do that. But if you can stop the run from dollar, this is probably the best blitz in Madden 22. And the reason why is because it actually comes off of both edges. So let's say they block a running back. In Madden 22, this might uh, pick it up. In Madden 23, this will not pick this blitz up, but you do see we get an instant shed or whatever. But anyways, so DB Fire 2, cover 2 style blitzing is one of the best ways that people are going to be playing Madden right now. So in my opinion, um, you have to start working on how am I going to be able to beat cover 2 and not the, the deep halves are really improved. Um, you know, I would equivalent the deep half to being probably the best zone the best deep zone at day on day one. Um, there are a couple key ways to beat it. The first one is this route to God. When this vertical's wheel route is still really good against cover two, you're just going to pass lead that to the outside once he clears the cloud flat. And I'll just deal it. But again, you're also noticing something. Again, like I said, I equate the pass rush to be very similar to the way it is right now in 22 practice mode. What you'll notice is look how fast they shed. 
So because of that, now my guy can't get, you know, that's kind of hard. And the quarterback releases, you're going to really want, in my opinion, especially if you're a regs player, I think you need to be using Aaron Rodgers because the releases are a big deal because the reaction time on zones this year are really, really good. They're getting, um, they're just really good. Um, that's the bottom line. They are able to react, and a lot of it has to do with the quarterback release. So if you have a faster release, you're going to be able to throw the ball in windows that you couldn't otherwise. But as you can see there, the vertical's wheel route still does beat cover two to the wide side of the field. Another route that I think you're going to be really in, uh, needing next year, and I'm just going to show you this by spying the rush, you're going to need this skinny post on the left side, combined with a corner route over here this is bunch trail essentially so something like this okay this right here is really important route and what you'll see here is yeah combine that with that running back wheel the deep half still does that he still dumbs out goes to the corner um so those are some things that you need to be kind of mentally thinking about however another thing that i want to point out is with madden 23 you're not going to have the pass protection so you've got to learn how to throw um, quick routes. And that's where I want to come over here to trips tight end and show you some things with this. So I'm going to come out in dollar three, two, six. I still think, um, in Madden 20, uh, in Madden 22 dollar three, two, six DB fire two is probably the best defense stock for trips tight end. You just come out and call it. Um, and you're going to need to be able to be equipped to beat it because if they can stop the run from this, which I, I'm telling you, that's where a lot of my personal lab work is going into learning how to stop the run from one, four, six or dollar because it's such a good pass defense. Okay. That being said, we have to learn how to beat cover too quick. One of my favorite tips is this right here, just a simple drag underneath the yellow. As you can see right there, he can come underneath that in Madden 23. The one thing that I will say, in my opinion, the vertical hook zone does um, it's not the best zone. And the reason why it's not the best zone is because if I throw this guy in the seam, let's say I did something like this. This seam read, you see I can throw that right there. Now in Madden 23, they will drift back. And it's essentially just a high-low concept. And I'll give you a little bit of an example here. But you're gonna high you want a high-low vert hooks, in my opinion. So I'm gonna shade up. And what you'll notice here, I'm gonna re-put the soft squats out. But what you'll notice with this is he'll now follow, he'll follow circle. And so then he'll follow a circle and now I can take my drag. That concept right there is really, really important in Madden 23. And um, it's just been something that I've been trying to come back to. This play right here with like a corner route to the tight end, please don't underestimate how important this play is. Because now they can't blitz me from cover two because I'm just going to go boom. Okay, so that's an important thing that I think you need to be paying attention to. The little quick hits over the middle against cover two. And then also, uh, wheel routes are are not like, they're not as good as they were, but they're still really good. And especially if you can get them outside of the numbers, which is really what people started to figure out with running back wheels. So what you want to do, let's say you're getting the cover two blitz a lot. Well, I'm going to take Godwin and I'm going to put him on a streak. Okay. Then I'm going to take Miller and I'm going to put him on, you know, uh, or I'm sorry, I'm going to go to PA shot post to do this. Uh, I'm going to take Miller, put him on a streak, and then I'm going to take Evans and put him on an out route. This little concept right here is really good against the cover to soft squat uh, pressure. As you can see, that wheel route gets outside the numbers and I can just hit that and go. Those are concepts that are really important in Madden 23. Let me show you another route combo that I think is really good. Um, you have to be willing to take your check downs in Madden 23. So what you'll see here, this is verticals. I'm just going to wheel this running back. Now the wheel in Madden 23 is a little bit more outside than a streak, but it's kind of a, it's more of a seam wheel. So it's going to kind of run in the numbers. But what you'll see here is I can throw that against a soft squat or cloud flat, kind of like we used to in Madden 20. Okay. But now what you'll see, what they'll do here is they're going to hard flat when they hard flat. You have to be able to hit your corner. So you see here, right there, okay? Now another thing that you can do in Madden 23 against a hard flat is you can throw this wheel right in that window. Now again, in Madden 23, that wheel is gonna cut a little bit sooner to kind of help that problem, okay? 
But those are some things um, that you need to be prepared to deal with. One of the things I will say that I feel like I really hope that EA does do a little bit of work on is man-to-man. And the main reason why is because part of it is the fact that in regs, you don't have like great route running. And that's why in regs, for the last several years of Madden Classics, especially starting in Madden 21, um, man coverage has been king in those modes. Well, I'm just going to tell you right now, the best man coverage in the game is dollar three two six cover one robber press, and the setup is really simple. We're gonna shade inside and underneath and press. That's it. And then we can use her this guy. Now I don't need this guy in the middle of the field. I could put him in a purple. And this coverage right here, if they don't fix this, this will be the best coverage defense in the game. Because remember, I don't have to blitz. You know what I mean? I could drop one of these guys into a bluff blitz. I could put the safety in a purple, and now my user can be in the middle. And what you'll see here is a popular man beater from Trips Tied In that will beat man in 22. It's a lot harder for this to beat man right now. So you see that, you know, here we're able to hit the post, but I'm just telling you right now, shaded inside underneath man is going to be really, really good, at least at the snap of the ball. Honestly, you could just come out and shade underneath, like just, just literally shade underneath, and this will be fine too. This defense right here is, is probably the best coverage defense day one. And so people are going to have to understand that you're going to need a plan to beat it. One of my favorite routes to beat man-to-man -man is this wheel route against shaded underneath man. I think it's fairly effective, especially in Madden 20 uh, and Madden 22. You'll see here if he's shaded underneath, now it's a speed race over the top. Well, that separation is not quite as good in Madden 23. So those are some things you need to be kind of paying attention to. My hope is that they will tune down the um, the man-to-man -man effectiveness. Match coverage. Uh, match coverage is honestly almost exactly the same as it is in Madden 22 with a couple of minor tweaks. Um, the defenders certainly react a little bit better in coverage, but there are still some of the same bugs. For example, if you run match coverage against Gun Bunch, you need to deep half the safety. Otherwise, there's about 15 different ways they can beat you over the top. So those are some simple things. Match coverage to me, I think the best coverage is cover four quarters, at least as it sits right now. Because with cover four quarters, your quarter flats, the quarter flats I think are one of the worst zones in Madden 23. And you need to turn them into curl flats. Well, you can do that in quarters, but you can't do that in cover four palms, um, at least at the same level. So quarters and palms are still really good but they're not um it's not they're not actually i'm trying to think i'll say this they're not any better than like cover two um is going to be cover two is really good zone what you want to do with cover two is you actually want to leave these deep halves because the deep halves will play the bombs really good especially short side so what you could do is you could put this guy here in a inside third which you don't even need to do that in Madden 23 to be honest um you know you could do something like that and this guy you could put him and you know kind of move him over here just get him more to the sideline this defense right here is really good um you know just simple and then what i would per personally recommend is shading underneath and putting re-putting the clouds so the vertical hooks what you'll notice is they will play a little bit more underneath and then you see how they're going to play that see how, see how far he plays that drag into the route it kind of protects your user a little bit. So those are um, some of the deals with, with that. Um, one of my favorite route combinations, I think one of the most effective routes and something that you're going to need to know for Madden 23 is a corner route is probably your best chance for beating man-to-man. -man. So you'll see here, um, I don't get that good of separation in Madden 22. In Madden 23, your corner routes, especially the bunch trail corner or like a hot route master corner where they're a little bit sharper and they kind of snap to the outside a little bit better. Those are really your go-to routes against against that. While I wanted to talk about cover two a little bit more, um, another one of the really important concepts that I think you're going to need in Madden 23 is this concept right here. So I'm going to cover two defense and I'm just going to run this. PA slot corner, I'm going to streak Scotty Miller, and I'm going to drag this guy. This kind of principle right here where the outside receiver is on an underneath cutting route, cutting to the inside, whether it be a dig, a drag, or you could even do a zig route. Um, 
these three routes are really good for pulling this cover two. See how he'll kind of freeze on that and he forgets the corner. That right there is a really critical route combination out of uh, trips tight end. It's a really critical route combination out of anything for that matter because if let's say we go over here to PA slot corner and we're going to actually put Chris Galvin on a hitch and we're going to motion him over here. If they're going to play cover two on you, this right here will be a decent way to kind of get at it. And this is essentially a smash concept. But basically what we're going to do here, this little hitch is going to hold that cloud down. And then there's that little window on the outside pass lead that I can hit that. Speaking of pass lead, I do want to talk about, I'm going to flip my, uh, I'm going to flip sides here so I can show you some bunch concepts. But um, speaking of pass leads, I did want to talk about the TC or total control passing system. My personal recommendation would be that until more is come out about it, I wouldn't use it. Um, I had it on for a lot of the beta and honestly, I didn't notice like a massive difference. Um, I think it's like a subtle difference. And so if you really are good with it, maybe, but to me, it's, it's kind of a, a fluff feature as it sits right now. And if there's more research on that, more people start using it and kind of figure out the way to do it, that's fine. But to me, it's not, it, you, you could still move the ball fine without it. So that's just. But I was getting a lot of inaccurates and, you know, when that. So it's basically kind of like a shot meter in 2K, um, just the way that it works, which is a lot better than what it was, what it used to be. Um, but anyway, that's just kind of my personal opinion. Okay, so I just wanted to show you a couple things here from Bunch um, real quick from a meta perspective. And first things first is cover four match. So with cover four match, this is what I'm talking about, about needing to needing to deep half when your bunch or when their bunch is on the on the wide side of the field when it's on the short side of the field you don't have to deep half but when they're on the wide side of the field you need to deep half this zone and the reason why is because if i run um actually let me reset the play so if i run the play clear out of in and i corner route miller what you should see here is that this fade will absolutely just kill it now it's even simpler than that actually, and I'll show you something else you can do against match against bunch. You can just simply put the tight end on a smart routed in, the outside receiver on a smart routed out, and then you could just street Godwin. You just need them to go vertical. And so what you'll see here is they're gonna go vertical, and as you can see, the match coverage just kind of freezes out, and I'm able to burn them over the top. But what you can do to combat this is your in your in your coverage is you can do this so here's the same route combination remember this was primarily for wide side bunch and so this is wide side bunch i'm going to i'm going to explain why it's important in just a second but here's clear out ethylin to the wide side and what you'll see here is this deep half on the right we'll guard it all the way corner route get pretty much guarded and then as you can see okay so that is wide side bunch now Short side bunch is different than wide side bunch. And that's something you need to know. One of the other big wins I think for EA is two things with, um, you can now snap motion snap on the same side, which really does help trips tied in and U trips. Um, not so much bunch, but it, it does help some of those other formations. So you can now same side motion snap. The other thing is when you flip your bunch, there is basically a massive delay on how many hot routes you can do. And so until that code gets cracked for right now, you really, in my opinion, there's not necessarily a massive reason to flip your bunch. Uh, I'm sure there's still some value to it. And also it resets your play. So you're not going to be able to like put Scotty Miller on a slot apprentice post and then flip it. And then he'll be on the outside. He, that's not going to be able to work. Okay. But anyways, back to this uh, concept. So um, I'm going to show you something real quick that I think is really important because this is going to be one of the best plays in Madden 22 or in Madden 23. It was one of the best plays in 22 as well. So you see here, I have a deep half on this right side of the field and I'm running clear out FLN with the fade to Godwin. If I wait on this fade, once that guy turns his feet inside, here it actually played it quasi okay. But let me try to give you a really, let me try to get a really good example for you. But essentially what's gonna happen is this deep half will suck inside to play 
um, to play the streak. And that's something that's really important. So you'll see here, see how I can pass lead that to the right? And it's a tight window, but if I have Gunslinger or if I have a better release than what Brady has, um, I can normally fit that in. And I'll show it to you one more time uh, with this. So clear out off a win. And you're just waiting. Pass lead to the right. And there you see it. See how it's, it's kind of a tight window on 22. In 23, it's even more open. And the, a better way to show this is with a traditional cover too. This is a little bit better of a picture of what's going to happen. So what you'll see here is this fade. Once that guy sucks in, he's going to suck into the seam streak. And that'll leave that right there open. So what you don't want to do against Bunch is you don't want to run cover two to the short side um, if you're going to, if they do have this play. So now let me show you something else though. If I come out in my, in my cover four, what you'll see here is this actually plays this properly when it's to the short side, that fade doesn't get over the top. It has to do with the grid system that actually is still very much alive in Madden 23. A lot of people said, well, they're trying to get out of the grid system. It's kind of hard to do that because it is a computer. It's a, you know, it's a computer game essentially. So, or it's a, you know, whatever. It's got an engine underneath it. So the drift logic is certainly better. But what you'll see here is this fade will now get played by this guy. Okay. So what's the point? The point is you don't want to be running cover two short side against bunch. If they know what they're doing, they will crucify that coverage. But cover two wide, um, cover two, or that deep half element of quarters is still really good to that side. Now let me show you something else with cover two. This is a little bit of a different example, but I think it's still going to see what I'm trying to get at here. The short side verticals with this wheel route. That right there does get open on uh, Madden 22. On Madden 23, that won't get open, okay? The deep half on the right will be able to get over there. But one of the things that you can do from Big Nickel over G is you can outside third this defender. And then if you wanted to, you could have this guy in a middle third. This kind of two-thirds over here and then a half on the solo is a really good coverage. And now what you'll see with the verticals play is this outside wheel is not going to really be there. So a cover three, kind of a cover three cloud, if you will, um, kind of coverage. If you know, Those are some things that you need to kind of be aware of for bunch. Um, and then another thing that I do want to hit on with bunch real quick is bunch trail. Like I said, bunch trail is the best... Um, it's the best man beater from bunch as it sits right now. And it's also the best cover two beater. So it's a really good kind of two for one play. But what I want to show you with this is against cover two, all you have to do is snap the ball. And once he crosses inside of that, that'll be open. Another quick tip about Madden 23 is that you need to, if you want to play match coverage or if you want your zones to have matching principles within them, in your coaching adjustments, you're going to have to turn that on. Um, it's going to come default off, which in my opinion, it's just going to mean that cover four quarters will play like cover four spot drop, which is not bad. Um, it's just more control for us. But I think for a casual gamer, it's actually going to hurt them because they're, well, I don't know if it'll hurt them, but they will basically not have any matching principles. So that's kind of just a small little thing that you need to be aware of. Um, one other thing about this, a uh, bunch trail play. Let me show you man coverage real quick. So if you play man, this route to Scotty Miller is one of the best man beaters in 22. You see how he doesn't get jammed. Now in, in 20 or in 23, I'm sorry. In 22, that logic of that, like he's going to hitch up, that's not as glitched out. As it is in 22, it's a lot better. It makes plays like mesh a lot more effective. So this little drag route right here, you see how he's going to get that right there, and then he's going to get that separation. That is still very good in Madden 23. Okay, That's actually probably the best way that I've found to consistently beat man-to-man. -man. And then what you can do is create a high-low with your tight end. So you see here, do this, create a little high-low, and then also remember that corner route is really good against man as well. 
Verticals are still really good. The wheels uh, from verticals against zone are still really good, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, they still clear out stuff like that. They're still really good against like a cover three. So if I'm in like a cover three, uh, what you'll see here is this wheel to the tight end, pass late inside. It's still really good. Do not low ball. It's one of my biggest complaints about the beta is that they made low balls. They didn't fix low balls. They just basically might as well have taken them out of the game. Anytime you throw a low ball, the majority of the time you're going to get an inaccurate. Another thing is you can't really pass lead curls and you can't pass lead flat routes um, very well. Um, like when a flat route sits on the sideline. Let me give you an example. So just to show this, I'm going to... I'm going to kind of get these guys out of the way. So I'm going to throw this, like he's going to curl up and I'm going to pass lead it up. That's kind of what happens where he just kind of like spazzes out on the sideline. The same thing happens with flat routes. If you pass lead a flat route when it sits on the sideline, it's just not very good. So what you want to do is you want to throw it with no pass lead and then allow him to go upfield. So that's something else. But low balls to me need to be fixed. Um, and then... That's kind of blocking your running back. Um, a lot of people are saying that, you know, blocking your running back is actually not that good in Madden 23, which I kind of disagree with. I think it's better, than, way better than blocking your tight end. Blocking your tight end in Madden 23 is not very good. But what I can do, you need to do this with your pass protection. You want to ID the person on the running back side that's outside of him or someone over here. Because this is essentially a slide. This is the best way that I know to slide. So I'm going to ID the corner over there on the right side, and then you'll see the running back will pick up, actually pick up the safety right there. Okay, so kind of similar. It, it basically is going to make your lineman because the user is going to be here, and they're going to be sending the blitz here. Well, I want my line. You know, if they blitz that that nickel corner over there, I want my line to be slid to him, and then my running back will take the safety. So you see here, he takes this. He takes the safety. If I step up, he would take the safety. But anyways. So I actually think the running back is the best way to pick up blitzes in Madden 23. Blocking your tight end uh, can be very easily manipulated. I'll show you a blitz that does manipulate it. It's basically this. We're just going to blitz the nickel corner. And then we want to contain this guy on the outside. And that's going to give him a little bit more of a, like a loop. And you see how that can almost, almost, and it kind of did right there. So anyways, guys, that's kind of my main review. Uh, last thing I did want to show you was a pro tip from Big or from 335 Wide. That is really good. And basically it's this. We're going to utilize our... Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to teach this. They don't really have a play. Oh, here we go. Cover one contain. This is the best. So in Madden 20... Three, it's called like OLB fire or something like that. This defense right here is really good. All we're going to do is we're going to come out. We're going to globally blitz our linebackers. And then we're going to man align and press. And what you'll see is we get really nice press animations um, here. And we're just going to press until the running back or linebacker goes in the gap. Now we're going to stand in the opposite gap right here. And what you'll see is we can then reset our linebackers. And now our linebacker will be in man coverage on the running back. And then we're going to stand here. This right here to me is one of the best blitzes in the game day one. Um, it, it didn't come in practice mode here, but I'm telling you this comes in a lot. So this defense, because it, because again, I think in Madden 23, if you can get your defense to line up right, it's going to be really, really, really good. So, you know, something as simple as this, they block the running back. And as you can see, the loop concept still really good. So that defense is going to be very good as well. That's it for the video. It's all the time I have today. I might do some more videos down the road. Let me know if you like the video, if you want to learn more about Madden 23 as we approach the game. And also let me know um, what you thought of the video. And if you want to get our membership, uh, it's only $10 to sign up for the Patreon and it gets you access to literally everything, um, all the eBooks, everything. And like I said, we're having our Madden 23 training camp series that we're going to be starting here uh, probably in the next day or so. First episode will be out this week in the membership videos, and that way you can get kind of going on getting prepared for Madden 23.